Welcome back to Bros in the Landfill. Bernie Sanders seen naked at Applebee's. More at 11. Your hosts for this week <laughs> are the is, is Tar. <laughs> oh, I can just I can feel your 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 seething hatred of me. Yeah. And for the reasons why the viewer may not expect. By the way, I'm Try. Let's get the show on the road. <laughs> Actually, I just want to say one thing, a couple of things. First off, uh, to all of the people who listened last week and are fans of the Transit Nexus, I would like to issue a formal apology. I am sorry. The Transit Nexus is about the best mid-game card you could possibly have. I don't think anybody cares. I really don't think anybody cares. I don't think so either, oh. but you know what? <laughs> Fuck off. Fuck. By the way... You did, did, you, did, 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 hey, wait, 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 wait. Hey, hey, hey. Did you do your... Did you do your part and show this um, podcast to all of your um, Star Realms bros? I'm not actually a part of a Star Realms community, but I did show it. Well, by by looking at our analytics, at our metrics, you've probably it seems like you've done a pretty shit job of shilling it. <laughs> the average watch time is is twenty like twenty four minutes, and I watched the full thing, so that's pretty bad. Oi, so do I. So if you and I both watched the full thing on our own accounts, that means we've had people watching probably a few minutes being like, what is this bullshit? And they leave. You know, I can't stop people from doing that. You know, I can't stop people. Anyways, if the lovely viewer out there is wondering why I seem so uh, spiteful today, it's because of a little um known fact that last week Tarts talked about Star Realms and you, but you guys might not not have known known this. It's it's okay. It's not that important. But Dizzy and I tried the game. Uh, after I was done listening to the podcast, uh, editing the audio and whatnot, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna download Star Realms. It sounds right up the alley. My alley. I like deck builders. Uh, I proceeded to play it. I proceeded to do all the free stuff uh, and complete all the missions on the free stuff, getting like perfect stars on each one because I wanted to give it a fair shot. I mean. Sometimes that's, that's what you do with games. You don't like it that much at first, but as you get more into the weeds of it, it starts to it starts to grow on you. It starts to be like, oh, um, now I see the appeal of this. I fucking hate Star Realms. The more I played it, the more I hated it. Why? Because it's a bad deck builder. It's... Why? Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so <laughs> this has been a, a week's, a week's long time coming. Uh, Tar knows that both Dizzy and I did not have fun with the game. Why do you guys bully me like this? Because like, first, I, first I leave for a week and you guys do these awful impressions of me. Like, Lunch, lunch Billion thinks I'm some sort of New York gangster. Like, wait, bada wait, bing, bada hey, boom. Hey, don't, don't, don't speak for Lunch Police when he's still in this, standing in this room with us. Hey guys, it's me, Lunch Police. <laughs> oh. I'm lunch hey. police. I like uh, I like old anime. Uh, I I went to go see the Broly movie because Dragon Ball is cool, except Super because Super sucks. <laughs> hey guys, I'm lunch police and I'm a Link main. Fuck fuck you fuck you. Uh, Link, Link's no longer good in Smash Five until I uh, we realize he's broken. Uh, I I'm gonna main Zelda now because Zelda's got. Uh, her final smash is too strong. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Yeah. Anyways, I don't, I don't play Smash Five. Um, uh, sorry, not sorry, Lunch Police, but you're the last person. I think have we done Dizzy yet? Yeah, we've done. Dizzy um, yet. yes, we have a okay. long time ago. So all we have left to do is to do GD, but I don't feel like we. It's worth doing it if GD's gonna be just like a guest every so often. Yeah, same. Anyways, um, but, but and, and then. After you do that, you, you just waltz right on in with with and, and just say all of my opinions are trash when I finally su suggest an episode. <laughs> uh, Fuck okay. off. Okay, so um, so while this is this episode's gonna start off as the Try Hates Star Realms episode, it's also the Ascension episode, which is another deck building game that I'm a really big fan of, um, and I'm quite a bit of a nerd about. Now. We can before we get into that, we can all say it's a matter of these of oh preference like you like the certain preferences of the different deck builders. 
But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit here and I'm going to make a, a, an argument using logic and f- facts to prove, oh, shit. To prove <laughs> that Ascension is the superior deck builder. <laughs> okay. With the power of Ben Shapiro's logic and facts, I'm going to prove... That... We just lost all of our I know, viewers. I know. All the, all oh, they're the, coming for all, me. No, all the viewers that hate, like all the viewers that hate Ben Shapiro left because I said Ben Shapiro. All the viewers that like Ben Shapiro left because I was clearly making fun of uh, Ben Shapiro fans. <laughs> you... Why do you do this to us? I don't know. Just logic, this is your fault. Logic and facts, my friend. Logic and facts. Help! They're they're coming for you. Yeah, they're coming for me. It's because um, I've 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 said the he I've I named he who should not be named. <laughs> hey, I could have said change my mind. What the fuck is going on? I don't know. Anyways, we're um, we're seven minutes in and I have yet to say anything of substance. So let's get right into it. So, my so Star Elves is bad. Why? Because deck builder games are inherently it's a inherently flawed genre. And in general, the more like what I what I find, and this kind of leads back into Star Realms, the less room for flexibility there is, like the more these are the be- this is like the best deck, or these are the best cards, uh, or whatnot. Like the less flexibility there is to, to build your deck, the harder it is to gain momentum, and as for my time playing Ascension, the number one thing that, I, and definitely this is true when I was playing Star Realms, because some of those later missions are pretty bullshit. Um, the worst position to be in in a deck builder is to not have momentum. And when you don't have, and when you don't have momentum, the game no longer becomes fun. Now, the way that regular card games get around. This sort of thing is you already have your deck. You come in prepared with a deck. You've made this formulated strategy of these are this is the cards that I think will help me win this tournament or this game or whatever. You don't you, you bypass this whole um, hey uh, I gotta pick up figure out which resources I have. Granted, regular deck card games have the issue of oh you're you have to physically buy cards and it's you got the randomization process there. But at never at no point are you in a position of I have to try to get this card before my opponent does. And where a, a deck builder like Star Realms fails in my eyes is the amount of player interaction in the game. Especially due to its win condition being that you take your opponent's attack down to zero, oh, HP down to zero. So you're saying there is too much player interaction or too little? There's too much. There's too much player interaction, and in a certain like to in a certain because ex- what I want to one of the key elements of deck building. I mean, card games have this as well, but this is c- crucial for deck builders. Deck builders like rely heavily on random variables that cannot be accounted for, and while with makes sense. So when you're when you're building a deck in a in a for a real life card game, you're never really gonna know which cards you're gonna draw. But you can optimize your deck to be able to say, okay, I'm gonna try to draw these cards. I'm gonna draw these cards to get certain cards out. When you're doing a deck builder, the randomness not only is with your own deck, but it's also with the middle. Like it's a deck that goes into the center row, where you never know which cards are gonna be available at a certain time, and you can sit like so. Give me a few um, good cards for um, Star Realms, and I'll try to use an example. Like must uh, have, like mu- give me like a must have, a must have strategy, like must have, like sh- like a, a must have ship. Yeah, like give me a few must have ships that work well together. Um. So, uh, Stealth Needle is the absolute must have. That is the best card in the game. And that's a, if I'm correct, that's a relatively low cost card. Or uh, yeah, it costs four. Uh, it's oh, four. red. I mean, four is still quite a bit for a um deck builder, especially early game. Uh, kinda. Well, because because uh, in in deck builders, within the first few turns, you're not going to get anything really over four or six. 
just uh, the hard maximum for first hand is five. Yeah, well, it's, but that's, chances that's, are that's, chances are you're gonna get four. Yeah, so realistically speaking, uh, if there's a space needle out on the field, you're only gonna be able to grab that card. So let's let's st- take a step back. Let's say that you got a field. Um, what's a D? De- like, what's what would you say is another good starting card that's not space needle, but isn't as good as space needle? Um, a good starting card. I am a huge fan of the RAM. Uh, anything that can generate a good number of coins. Okay, so let's say for example, you like the starting board off. You got some a few high level cards that no one's going to be able to get. Uh, you got some like few trash cards, and then you have the RAM and the like RAM in there. So you're like, okay, I'm going first. Let me go take the RAM because either you don't have like the other options are not worth getting. Or the RAM is so good. You take the RAM, and then the next card that comes into play is Space Needle. I was like, yeah, that, that hurts. That does hurt. Now, that wouldn't be as huge of a problem if there, was, if there wasn't so much player interaction or if there wasn't s- certain strategies that were always guaranteed to be the best. Um, and... This, this kind of plays back into my number one issue with Star Realms, where it's not just the matter of the attacking, it's the matter of the car, like cars, the faction, the way that the faction system works in Star Realms. If, if you don't... Okay, so, as you explained last week in, with Star Realms... So your, your main issue with Star Realms is the faction system? It's the faction system with... Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, I would say, yeah, the faction system... system the... Okay, so I guess I'll, I'll go back to this. Because Ascend, Ascension has a faction system, too, in one of its later expansions. Granted, that's a that's a later expansion. That's not one of the high-priority ones. But and it, do, it does, at some point, like, during some of the expansions, have a faction-like system. Like, well, faction leaders and then cards that play off each other like that. But because of cert, like, the way that the card game is structured... That is not your. That is not your only way of excelling in the game. You don't have to rely on the faction. Like, in in reality, like within Ascension, your 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 best sort of deck is a very variety varied deck with where you're utilizing all the different factions together. Like, and in Star Realms, that can work too. As long as you build, as long as you skew red early, just so you get rid of all your non-colored cards. But the but the problem with Star Realms as a game is so I, I think maybe I should start talking about Ascension a bit more right now, so like you can see the bit of the p- bigger picture because Star because Ascension has a has a two um has a like and I would in Star Realms terms of coins and attack. Uh, like they have cards that generate like coins and coins that generate attack. Okay, like, I figure all deck builders would have to have yeah. that sort of mechanic. Or, yep, or at least like multi like it'd be it'd be ridiculous if like it was just all the same currency for every card. Where right? If all if all cards cost the same, you mean? Yeah, where Ascension differs. Well, I guess I'll I'll. I'll I'd like to jump around my topics. So my 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 point with the the player interaction is in a deck build the the main interaction between players is going to be between certain card effects and the middle row. The middle the middle row is the prime exa- like is where you're going to be like okay this is how I'm going to fuck over my opponent. There's like I, you can either be like okay there's a really good card on the field I'm going to grab that or I know my opponent's building this sort of deck let me take this even though I might not need that card I'm going to take this card so they don't have it in their deck. That makes sense. Yeah, it's a. There's a lot of, because, in, in general, deck ma- deck building games or deck manipulation games. You're not only trying to plan out what's going to be in your own deck, but what's going to be in your opponent's deck. And, uh, with Ascension, the way that the um it works is that, it's, I okay. I guess I'll I'll say like I'll just go back to my one big issue with this like um. Uh, I'll just say one quick thing about Star Wars. Fuck, fuck the yellow faction. Uh, fuck the, fuck the how uh, readily available it is to make your opponent discard cards, because in a deck building game that is, like in general, in a deck building game, forcing your opponent to discard resources, 
especially if you're getting late game when you have better resources in hand, can can make or break a game. Because the amount of resources you have in hand and your ability to get through your deck as quickly as possible is one of the most important assets in a deck builder. And the fact that there's a faction and that excels at making your opponent discard cards where you can play it, like, if you're playing a yellow deck, well, you can make your opponent discard two or three cards in one turn. You have to skew really yellow in order to do that, though. Oh, tr I was, trust, is... me, trust me, I was able to, like, there was, in one of the missions, there's one that um, the opponent always makes you discard a card every turn. And I skewed heavily yellow on that, and I was essentially... And I, I basically won because I wasn't letting them play any cards. That's fair. Um, like, that is one strategy. And um, but if you have that... The yellow is also fairly high damage. Like, green is a little bit more high damage than yellow, but yellow's no slack. But, th but Yellow's that's, no slouch either. But, but so that, if you're doing that, you've already won. But, and see, that's that's my point with Star Realms, is that certain fact... Like, I... Certain factions are so strong that once somebody has them, it's game over because of the level, the, the nature of the attack based system. And Ascension's, a, Ascension's not a game where you interact in that regards. That there's no like attack damage, there's no life points or whatever. And Ascension, because really, it, yeah, it works on a point based system. Uh, so let me um take all the steps back and I'm gonna stop talking about Star Runs this much now. I'm gonna specifically talk about Ascension. And then if you if you have anything to talk about like Star Realms with that because I'm gonna just bitch about Star Realms this whole podcast. Oh, and fun. I, and, I, and I prefer <laughs> thank not, you. I prefer thank you not... for the thank you for attacking me like so, this. So um, I just wanted to get out get out my big gripes, but I, I don't like the attack based system. I don't like um how heavenly faction based it is, and uh the yellow faction is is terrible. So that, this is interesting. You think yellow faction is the best? Well, no, I like it the well. Okay, okay, no, it's not that yellow in itself is the best. It's that yellow is heavily splashable and can, like, if that's if you're able to consistently get yellow cards, you can prevent your opponent from getting resources or doing as much damage as they normally would do in a turn. Turn, and then most important thing in a deck building game is be able to get resources. Because let's say, like, let's say if you have, like, if you're able to say, oh, I've drawn enough just to get this beef, like, like, uh, let's say if, like, the best ship in the game's out on the, in the center row, and you've just drawn enough to get that, um, card, and I'm like, like, oh, uh, I've played a yellow, like, one or two yellow cards, or I had the yellow, um, like, base out. I'm going to make you discard two or three of your, like, one, two or three of your cards. Even just discarding one card can be enough to uh, make a difference with... Not most of the time in my experience. Like, you had to discard two to really do damage. But at, but at that point, if you're... Like, if you're, if you're grabbing yellow cards, you're not just going to be grabbing one yellow card. That's... That's... That's fair. It's not, it's not that yellow has a high ceiling. It's that yellow is highly disruptive and it makes the game less fun to play for the other person. At, at, nope. That's, and cause this goes that's back, valid. Because this goes back to my main point. Deck building games is about momentum. And even if you feel like you're behind, as long as you feel like you have momentum, you feel like you can catch up. And yellow gives, one, gives you the most momentum and stops momentum from the other player yes so and at that point it's like you're playing it's you, at that point you it feels like even if you still have a chance of catching up it's disrupts the game flow and it makes it disrupts momentum and makes it less fun for the other person where as opposed to something like ascension because of like there there are a couple cards in the game that can make your opponent discard cards however they're only like they're not something that's you're gonna be able to put in your deck and access all the time. Like your opponent, like it's more like oh shit, they made me do this this one time. It's never every it's, you never have to worry about oh do they have the yellow card in their hand at this very moment. So, um, any last defenses on store rooms before I go into ascension? I'll probably try to bring up things that as they're relevant. 
but as of right now, no. Now, it might seem like I'm really, like, the reason why I'm so frustrated with Star Realms is because I've played Ascension for years. I definitely, it's definitely my preference. And I've definitely, I've done a lot of thinking about Ascension because I'm, as a, I'm a nerd about. I'm not just a nerd about anime, Dizzy. Mm. Oh, jeez. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, man. So, okay, keep going. Yeah. And the the only thing keeping me from playing Ascension as much as I would like to is that uh, the physical sets are like tw- like at least twenty dollars each, and it's not like and I don't really have people to play uh, on mobile with. That okay. I, also, it's a, the, the games can go on for a bit long, if like it's either they're either too short or too long. But is this a bitch about Star Realms or is this about Ascension? Ascension, about Ascension? Ascension can either go on for too long or be too short. Okay. D- depending on because, but this is more of the um, because of the mobile version, because just okay. So I guess I'll, I'll talk I about mean, this. I a guess bit later. Star Realms can be the exact same thing. Well, it's it's more about it's more about how the point it's more it's blue. well it's more well it's more about how the point system works and how many points you want to work in with the game. Like, there's a there are middle grounds to make it better, but. It's due to the uh, how many um, points, it's, uh, like the point max you can do in um, Ascension, well, the, the mobile version. Sometimes I don't feel like it's going on as long as I want it to go on. And then a lot of the um, physical games only give you so many um, points to play with anyways. So it's less of a problem with the game itself. It's more of um, the medium to play. You could probably play it, get to play it with more. Anyways... That's a very boring rant there. Point, the point stuff doesn't matter. So the conceit of in- Ascension is that... Um, actually, I'll just read the little blurb from the um, rule, bu- uh, the rule book. You enjoy <laughs> reading blurbs. I do enjoy reading blurbs. Because I they, they, they say things better than I would be able to say it. For millennia, yeah. the world of Vigil has been isolated and protected from other realms. Now, the barrier between dimensions is falling and Samael, the fallen god, has returned with an army of monsters from the beyond. You are one of the few warriors capable of facing this threat and defending your world, but you cannot do it alone. You must summon powerful heroes and constructs to aid you in your battle. The player who gains the most honor points will lead in his army to defeat the fallen one and earn the title of God Slayer. So heroes are basically ships and constructs are basically bases. Yeah, essentially heroes are ships. Yeah, that's exactly right. But Eight. what where the pl- where the player interaction differs in Ascension is you're tr- you you and your opponent are trying to get mo- the most amount of points, and you're doing this by uh, recruiting heroes and defeating monsters. Because where so we're in Star Realms, you're attacking each other. In Ascension, the middle row... Both of you are attacking some third target, and whoever defeats it gets a point. Yeah, so in the middle row, you can have uh, you can have monsters, and you can have um, point, oh, and you can have um, heroes. So, and monsters take attack to defeat, and heroes take, um... What's the... It's called... The heroes take runes to, um, recruit. And... Oh, gosh. They're still coming after me. That's right. Now, um, here, when you defeat a monster, usually they have like an effect that goes with them. Like, um, the hell did I do? Um, what the hell did you do? Uh, I think it's Dizzy this time. Dizzy, what the hell did you do? I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> um, <coughs> so m- when you defeat a monster, they'll have like an honor. Like you'll get so much, so much honor for defeating that certain monster. Then there'll be different effects like draw a card. Uh, banish a card from your, uh, either banish a card from your hand or from your discard pile. There's that's basically scrapping. Yeah, yeah, and then there's um. Oh, uh, so just one moment. Yeah. So the way I'm imagining this is you have the so in Star Realms terms, you have your five card market. Yeah. Are heroes and monsters on the same market? On the same market. So you can choose to recruit heroes or attack the monsters. Yep, or you can do both in the same turn, assuming you have enough attack or runes. Okay. And all right. And this is where Ascension gets a little more. I like some of the uh, Ascension a bit more. Well, I guess one of the things I really like about Ascension is because 
like like any deck um, deck builder, you there's a you have to like, there's this um level of predicting tra- predicting what's going to come out on the field. You know, like when you're when you're playing um when you're playing um Star Realms, you're always aware of how many like which cards have come out and what are the likelihood of other cards coming out. You know. Okay. I, now in Ascension, at least let's say in the like in each um expansion there are only about um like there's about the same amount of monsters in the deck as there are for each faction of hero so there's always more heroes in the deck than there are monsters okay however because of this you're naturally going to skew toward skew more towards oh I'm going to uh, build up. Uh, I'm gonna res- just focus on building you're up. You're gonna build my... up your army to try to. Yeah, you're just you're gonna focus to try to stab the monster yeah. to death in one turn. Yeah, well, so so generally speaking, you're um well with monsters, you have to defeat them that turn. You, it's not like you can just. Okay, so it's like an outpost. It's like an outpost, yeah. Neat. So, so the, right. And similar, like the constructs in the game, which are like the bases, your opponent can't attack them. There's like. There are oh. cer- there are certain card card like certain monsters. If you defeat them, defeat those monsters, your opponent has to um dis- destroy um also, like to destroy their um constructs and put them in a destroy oh, pile. Okay. So that so these constructs sound a little bit broken. It depend it depends because a lot of the constructs don't like the the abilities they have tend to not be as great as. The ones right. As, that, as basis. that makes sense, but the opponent can't get rid of them unless they kill a monster. Certain monsters at that. Yeah. Well, the the other thing is the the first the constructs tend to have the highest um, output. Well, the highest um. Like be the highest cost. Uh, things. Okay. And. Like, at least the good ones. Like <laughs> of most, course. I mean, most low level. Constructs either just generate like a single um attack or a single um coin thing, coin, and the monsters that you use to destroy the uh constructs are so are not super uncommon. Okay, so if there's a monster on the field, chances are someone is going to be destroying constructs. Yep. Even so, because of the nature of the game, both players are going to have constructs. It's not like, like there are plenty of constructs right. in the. I mean, there's a, there's a whole fact. Like, the whole mechanic faction is like, like I think like fifty, like it's fifty percent constructs. And you're not going to like. It's very rare for a single player to be able to get all the constructs. Like one player has to be playing really poorly on purpose, to not get those constructs. And then, okay. then each other so faction. Generally, will... you do want the constructs more than the heroes. Yeah, well, because the con- yeah the constructs stay in because play- they don't go away. <laughs> well, also the the best strategy in the game is to go for the mechanist constructs because the the heroes also have point values like assigned to them. So like heroes and constructs have like a honor on them, and at the end of the game, you count up that honor, and whoever has the most wins. Okay. And the highest, and the mechanic constructs have the highest honor in the game. I mean, there's um. I'm, ass- I'm assuming that's. I'm assuming that's just one of the factions. Yeah, the mechanic. So the three factions are um, enlightened, lifebound, mechanic, and void. Now, the other thing about you need to know about the constructs is that yes, while the co- like the specifically the mechanic constructs are the some of the best cards in the game, they only work with each other, where the other factions tend to be a little bit more flexible. So, uh, so I'll just I'll just go down the the list, uh, at least in the base game, because because what you'll see is in the um the for basic expansion, which is a uh, Call of the God Slayer. The the factions aren't as fleshed out as they get in some of the later ones. They're a bit simpler in this first one, but and I'm not going to go through every single expansion because. Oof. <laughs> I mean, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, there's there's twelve um expansions and six promo packs. Nice. So there's a, there's a lot to this game. If you're playing with every if you're playing with 
every like expansion and promo pack available, you have fifteen thousand cards in the main, or fifteen hundred cards in the main deck. Oof. That's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> it's a it's 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 a nightmare because you have all these different like effects, like all these different like gameplay mechanics interacting with each other. But it's it's chaotic as all hell. Just have you just have stack. You just have trade tower, not yeah. trade towers. You just have like towers on the market instead of one big deck. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a nightmare. Um. At least that, that's what that's what's nice about like the mobile like the uh, mobile and Steam versions is that you don't actually have to deal with physical cards. <laughs> I mean, imagine playing real life Star Realms with all the expansions. Star Realms, wait, Star Realms or Ascension? Star no, Star Realms has expansions. Yes, it does. But imagine imagine playing Star Realms physically with all the expansions. You don't have to. I do. Well, not all the expansions, but I have all the big ones. Yeah. I know. Okay. Well, anyways, so the first, the first um of the factions is the Alighting, which is the blue faction, which heavily is heavily optimized is this around. Blue, is what? this blue in Ascension or Ascension? Is that... Ascension. Okay. And we're talking about Ascension now. Um. So blue and Ascension. Was, is... Or are you trying to? I was going to ask if that was Ascension or if you were comparing yeah, it no. to Star Realms. No. So blue and Ascension boils down to at least in the base set. So I'll give you a base set and what they do with the faction as the game goes on. So okay. in the base set, ascend uh, enlightened faction. The enlightened faction is all about drawing cards. So each, so you'll have. So blue is so the blue faction is basically the yellow faction. Yeah, but without the, without dis- without making your opponent discard cards. Okay. Now the. Blue sounds OP. <laughs> oh yeah, no blue, but okay. So what you'll see is each like each faction has its utilization and you want to have cards from each of these factions so so you want all of the factions yeah you want all the factions so here's because if you if you only have blue cards you're going to be drawing a lot but you're not going to be doing anything with those cards you draw other than drawing other cards Mm. so most of these blue cards have no other effect other than draw yeah now there there are a couple weird blue ones there's um Two that, like, there's one that you can automatically defeat a card with four or less attack without paying for the cost. Or, and there's one that you can defeat a monster with six or less uh, attack without paying the cost. But do, there's only one of that. cost. So, okay, so, essentially, um, imagine you, because it might be hard to imagine this in Star Realms because you just, the only thing you're attacking is your opponent. So imagine that your opponent has like six or like six or less attack left. Well, six or less, six or less H or oh, um health left. Yeah. Or it'd be like you play this card, and you're defeating your opponent without having to actually expend any attack. Oh, so it's kind of like a base killer. Yeah, it's like a base killer. Yeah. You, it's okay. like it's like if you're like if there's a base with six or less life left, immediately destroy it. Without, without paying any cost. Okay. Without spending any of your damage. Yep. Now, I get it now. Yep. There's also um, a a card in um Enlightened that's set that lets you Enlightened also does a thing of like it likes to have effects that copy other effects you've played. So. There's there's one that's like oh if you um copy the effect like play this copy the effect of another hero you played this turn. Well, I'm thinking, we said earlier, blue doesn't do a whole lot other than make you draw cards. Yeah. So there's no point in really taking blue because that's just going to gum up your deck. No, but all the other... Unless, unless you go for the base killers. But, so, and this plays into the greater theme of, but you also want the blue because that's the only way you're going to get through your deck quickly and get to your power cards quickly. No, because that's still another card. Unless there's a lot of uh, no, there were there were there were, unless, there were there were cards in here that let you draw two or three cards. And also remember, each, okay, that's yeah. what I was going to say. And also remember, each each hero, like each um of these cards, have an honor count. So even the um, so essentially, let's say if you grab the um, the one that lets you draw a card, it's it's only worth one uh rune. So that's pretty cheap. You're probably if if you played a card, if, let's say if you had six runes. You picked up a card with five. You have one rune left. If you pick up the um, 
the R initiate, which is just one rune, draw a card. It also has one honor value, so you're essentially getting one you're getting one honor for free at that point. Because it might it might be taking up a space in your deck, but you're just immediately replacing it and it gives you an honor point. Okay. So that's it for the blue faction then? No, but there's one more card. The blue faction has the single most overpowered card in the game. Okay. It's called Tablet of Time's Dawn. And oh, a, that sounds overpowered. <laughs> yeah. So and it is a construct that if you have it in play, you can you can banish it or scrap it or whatever. And it lets you take an additional turn after the end of your turn. Nice! This is a card that will make or break games, especially if you're already playing with a lot of enlightened cards. So th it could essentially mean that you go through your entire deck twice within before your opponent takes a turn. <laughs> that's fun. Yeah. Anyways, that's that's it for Enlightened. The only other thing I'd say is um, as the games go on, it, ta it takes a turn away from focusing on drawing as the other factions get some pretty good draw cards and focuses on uh, replacing uh, dead cards for... Uh, like there's there's these cards called mystics and heavy um well heavily heavy militia basically what it's called um yeah heavy infantry that are always available for the player so let's say if you have two um if you have two honor well two if you have um two runes and there's nothing on the field you can get you can trade those trade those two runes for a heavy infantry or, okay so those are basically explorers in star realms yep yeah, or if you have um three runes you can trade trade one for a mystic mystics have give you two runes and heavy infantry give you two attack oh okay so the the idea there is that you never have a completely dead hand if this field is terrible yeah so, so let's that's say if, the same reason the explorers exist in star realms yeah cuz there will be there there are will be times when either there's like it's early game and there's monsters that have way too high runes. Well, no, well, there's gonna be. I've actually had times where I've gone to early game, and despite there only being like one fifth of the deck being monsters, I've had times where the whole field is just monsters and it's early game. F. Yeah. So you have to start investing in getting a bunch of heavy inf well, heavy infantry that you have to end up throwing away later. Right. But at at least the at least the um mystics and heavy infantry have um give you one rune as well, or one um honor as well. So, honor. Uh, so even if you have them at the end of the game, they're still giving you points. Okay. Now the next faction is called um the lifebound faction. Now the lifebound. What color are they? They're green. They're green. So and in terms of star realms, what color are they? <laughs> Uh, I don't think they really... They don't really fit into any of the yeah. four molds? Yeah, so st so first off, Lifebound it does a little bit of everything, but not as good as the other factions. Okay. They're a bit all around. They have a few cards that let you automatically acquire heroes. So there's one that says um, acquire a hero that's three or less, and then its big boss card is acquire any hero without any cost and place it on the top of your deck. Okay. But that so they're a little bit like blue. Yeah, but by by time you get by time you get to um, you're able to pick up the because since it's a seven rune card, your deck's already gonna be a little bit beefy and it's gonna take a bit for you to get to that and it might be the end of the game by the time you even get to summon it. Because I'm assuming there's no faction that lets you banish other cards and keep. Oh no, the, no, small, there right? there is there is. It's just if you, okay, if you, good. Because if there isn't, that's kind of a no deal for me since that's my favorite mechanic in Star Wars. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, because it because it, well, just because it's so well, necessary. Well, in deck builders, that's a very overpowered um uh ability is to, is to be able to thin your deck, especially because exactly. the especially because the because you'll start off with five apprentices, which is your which will give you uh rune, one rune each and then two. Uh. Uh, then you and then you have um two uh two infantry. little warrior men guys. Yeah, yeah, two little warrior men guys. So you you'll you'll always you'll start off with those. Okay. And then. And you want to get rid of them because they don't they don't give you any honor. They they can they just take up space in your deck. You want to get rid of those. Okay, that makes sense. Well, you start off with eight. You start with eight infantry. Well, eight um. Apprentices 2 infantry. 
Okay, so exactly like Star Realms. Yeah, so exactly like Star Realms. And you want to get those out of your deck as soon as possible. So at the very least, you're going to want to... Vo- like you want to take, be able to void, uh, send ten cards to the void in the span of the game. Oh, so wait, you said there was a faction called the Void, right? Yeah, oh well, yeah, because there's a faction called called the Void. I'll get to that because okay, the, the next one's Mechana. Uh, wait, uh, I'll just talk okay. about Mechana first because I've already talked about that. The whole the whole idea behind Mechana is that and and similar uh, similar to Lifebound, like Life. What you'll find is like lifebound and mechanic are kind of opposites of each other, and lighted and void are kind of opposites of each other. Of each other. Okay. So lifebound's a faction that. Right. So lifebound wants members for their gang, and void wants to take them away. Yeah. So lifebound and mechanic are both factions that kind of that work best with their own factions. Where in lighted and void, you want to splash those into your into a lifebound or mechana deck. Okay. So you're you're gonna you're probably gonna either be like I'm gonna have focus on getting lifebound cards. I'm gonna focus on getting mechana cards, because lifebound high lifebound cards help you get a lot of mon or get get a lot of things, and they work together. Especially late, especially like later, when like the union mechanic uh, comes like comes around, which is your like faction, and but there's but there's a, a couple cards, that in lifebound that are like oh, every time you play a lifebound this turn something happens. And Lifebound's really good at generating honor. One of its um, uh, constructs is every time you play a Lifebound hero this turn, gain one honor. Oh. So life, the, the, the win condition for Lifebound is you're going to be generating a lot of honor with them, so that's why you want to get a lot of Lifebounds to play with so Lifebound. So there are multiple win conditions then? Well, the win condition is they have the most honor at the end of the game. Each faction kind of has its own way of re- achieving that win condition. So- so then, what's the end game status? End game, end game. Okay, so there's a pool. There's only so much honor that can be achieved, and okay. So when you defeat a when you defeat a monster or you gain honor through an ability, you take honor from the honor pool. Generally speaking, the like the lowest like the low end of honor is there's 75 honor in the game. If you're playing on mobile okay. or you're mobile, you can boost it up to 120. But once once the honor is gone, the game ends after the second the, the last player ends their turn so like whoever starts whoever has their turn last in the first round once their turn ends when honor is out the game ends okay it, it basically allows everybody to have one last turn before when the pool runs yeah. out yeah so uh, lifebound is really good at generating honor for itself so that that so you said this was one of the factions that you wanted to skew heavily toward, right? Yeah, like exactly. I can see that. <laughs> so, for example, you'd want like an ideal an ideal playthrough would be you play um you play Lifebound and you have Enlightened like Lifebound and Enlightened is a very good combination because Enlightened will help you get to all of your Lifebound cards in one turn. And because lifebounds, like, you don't really need, once you have enough lifebound cards, you don't really need to grab any more cards. You can just keep the, like, keep the cycle going. You just whittle away at the monsters on the field. Yeah. But it, lifebound doesn't have high attack. They only have one monster that has, that actually has attack. Okay. So that's, so lifebound's more about acquiring, acquiring heroes with high honor. So lifebound yeah. is very much the blue faction in Star Wars. Yeah, I would, I guess. I mean, there's no healing capacity, I'm assuming. Yeah, well, there's nothing to heal in this game. There's nothing. To, there's no, there's no reason to heal. So yeah, yeah. big. The lifebound's job is to give you big resources quickly. Yeah, well, not necessarily big. Give you big resources because enlight, enlightened will help you get big resources. Lifebound's about like so. One of the thing about the monsters is there's only a, only so many monsters in the game, and there's some monsters that have high attack. Right. Lifebound allows you to get a lot of honor without having to deal without having to worry about what monsters are on the field. Okay. And that's important that cuz and that's important cuz it's it's not like you're getting honor th- cuz the honor that's on the cards that you have don't take away from the honor pool. They're added after the fact. Oh. Okay. So the only way to drain the honor pool is either by getting honor through a card effects or by defeating monsters. 
Okay. Lifebound's the only faction that has a has cards that allow you to grab honor without attack without defeating monsters. So you can drain okay. that pool and because remember the game only ends when there's no more um, honor left in the. Yes. And that's what makes Lifebound a really good faction. And why life and why Lifebound and Lydon's really good together. So in a way that. Honor sapping from the pool is a little bit like healing. Yeah, I, I would. In, like you can you can draw some comparisons. Yeah, it's not exactly the same. Yeah, but it's kind of the same concept. It gives you more insurance. Yeah, well, I would say it'd be closer to, to like say that like, uh, it's something like because it's not like you're ta it's it's not like you're taking anything from your opponent and like it's not like you're making the game end any quicker where this is like it's kind of like you're taking life from your opponent and healing at the same time but you're not like taking away any of their honor i don't know right but i mean it's honor that they could have but don't yes i understand what you're saying now moving on to the mechana the the sole purpose like the sole um ideology behind mechana is that mechanic cards help you get uh, more mechanic cards because the mechanic constructs well specifically they help mechanic cards help you get mechanic constructs because mechanic constructs have the highest honor um, rewards in the game and they all feed it they all feed into each other okay so a lot of the constructs have once per turn gain like gain X amount of runes, but you can only use these for mechanic constructs. Alright. And there's some pretty broken ones in here too. The um Hedron Link device says you may treat all constructs as mechanic constructs. So once basically once Ooh. you once you have that in play, you've basically won the game. <laughs> that's not that's not even it's not even a joke because that means you can all like all of your construct cards can affect other ones. Mm-hmm. Then there's the Hedron Cannon, which, um... So, the the ideal wing... The win condition for Mechana is to have Hedron Link, and Link Device and Hedron Cannon. Because the Hedron Cannon means... says, once returning game one, uh, attack for each uh, mechanic construct you control. So, if every construct you control is automatically made Mechana, due to the Link Device, and then you play the Hedron Cannon, you can essentially destroy any monster on the field. And you'll be able to destroy right. many monsters on the field because you'll be getting upwards of like 8, 10 attack just from this card alone. Ooh! I'm assuming the scaling is very similar in this game as it is to Star Realms? I, I guess. Because I 8 to 10 on one card is a lot in Star Realms. Yeah, well, the, the, high, the highest attack that a monster has is the 10, and that's not even in the base expansion. Um, in a later expansion, I forget exactly which one, but there's a card called the End of the World. That if you destroy it, you get it's it's ten attack. If you destroy it, you gain ten honor, and you remove all honor from the pool. That basically means get, the game ends at the end of the last player's turn. Okay. Does that honor go anywhere? No, no, it's it's removed from the game. You, like no one can. Okay. All right. But that there's only one of that card in the entire deck, so the right. likely, and that's not even in the base expansion, so you don't even have to really worry about it. It's one of those like, oh, cool! That's a win condition that I just pulled off. It's also yep. incredibly risky because you're, when you're playing, chances are you're not keeping track of how much honor you actually have with your cart with your cards. So you can uh -huh. do that. You can gain that ten honor and end the game, and your opponent might still have more honor than you, than you at the end. Right. So it's not even that good of a card. It's only good if you know you're ahead. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so, so Mechana, so Mechana is all about making other cards the same faction. Like it's it's about integration. So it's yeah. kind of like red, but yeah. not really. I mean, it, I would say it's it's absolutely the red of. Well, it doesn't have like the the only real like big attacker is the Hedron Cannon. It's got some other cards that generate attack, and it has one card that pools out um like it there's um so one of the clever things that they've done with the design of the mechana uh uh archetype well faction is that the card there's a card called the avatar golem that 
this gives you um, one honor for each faction among constructs you control. So ideally, early on, you've tr you've gotten constructs from each of the uh, light and life, mountain void. That you just focus on getting these constructs, and then you're generating um, honor through Avatar Golem whenever you can get them out on the field. And then when you get the Hedron, uh, Hedron Cannon, well, when you get the um, Hedron Link device, they all become a canna, and you can use the, and they they all get affected by the Hedron Cannon. So in, that doesn't sound like it synergizes with itself. Well. But that's only with that single Avatar Golem card, because the and I suppose like is that like a um, is that like it goes away immediately? Well, and also, well, yeah, yeah. The um, Avatar Golem is a um, it's like it's like a ship. It goes it goes away at the yeah. end of the turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also remember the Hinge on Link device makes every construct mechanic, even in the middle row. Yes. So oh. that means. So that that means that you can use your because there's there are card like there's hero abilities and construct abilities, that are like as I said that you can only use these runes for mechanic constructs. All of a sudden, these other faction constructs have become the mechanic constructs, and you can use those on the, those abilities on that construct. Okay, but it's also a seven it's a seven rune cost, so that's the only that's chances are that's the only one you're getting that turn if you're not already like. Because the only like, the only way that you'll get that card and other cards is if you're already so far ahead and you have already have so much momentum that it doesn't even matter anymore. Um, is seven the most expensive, or is there an eight? No, there's eight. It's later fa later games have like like expansion have some cards that take ten room, but eight's, okay. eight's generally the ceiling. Eight's the ceiling. All right. And then finally, we have um, the void. The void. Where and those get the, rid of cards. the amply named void because the the banished section. Oh gosh, he's here! Oh my god, because the banished I, section's the void. The right. banished section's the void. Oh my god, are you recording? Yeah. Is that lunch, please? Oh god, don't listen to the beginning of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Anyways, I'm just. What are we talking finishing... about? Oh, well, I'm talking to um, uh, Tar about um a card game called Ascension. Oh. So I'm just finishing up with the last faction, and then the just guitar's final thoughts, and then maybe you can chime in or whatever uh, if you've played any deck builders or whatever. And you saw the Broly movie, right? I did. And I was hoping that we could maybe talk about that because I'm a bit curious about uh, it. Okay, sure. But you record. You are recording, right? I am. I have pressed okay. the button. Okay, good, because it's going to be really Great. awkward if there's, like, a silence for, like, the first half yeah. of this conversation. Uh, but, yes, The Void. Yep. So, The Void is, is aptly named The Void because the banished, where you banish scrap cards, is called The Void. Yes. So, the, like, two, the two... This is the very definitely red faction. Yep. So, the two principles of The Void are they've got the highest attack ceiling in the game outside of the, oh. Hedron, outside of the Hedron Cannon. So, this is... This is red green. Yeah. So they, the, I mean, this they have, uh, they they have a mon a hero with four attack, which is the highest base attack in the game, for well, the oh. base extent. And then they have there are all their constructs generate um attack for you. Okay. In fact, there's a later um expansion that has a uh, construct that it's called. It's essentially, it starts off with giving you one attack, but every time you defeat a monster in the middle, well, in the center row, uh, like, once per turn, every time you defeat a monster in the center row, uh, it gains a counter, and then you get attack every turn based off that counter. So you can... So the more monsters you defeat, the more powerful it becomes. Yeah. Okay. It's like, it's it's a it's a dink-ass scythe. Also, can I say that another thing that really disappointed me with um, uh, Star Realms is I did not care for the art, and that's also because... I'm spoiled because Ascension art, Ascension's art is so good. The card art in Ascension, really? the, the the card art in Ascension is like, like, uh, is amazing. I know. Really, because a lot of people say the artwork for Star Realms is phenomenal. I mean, Grant, I, I'll give Star Realms this: it's a space game, and I don't care much for spaceship designs, so I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I'll, I'll give, okay, I'll give, so there's a little bit of I'll bias I'll give you this there. one, Tar. 
All right. But also, Ascension's Ascension's. I will take this one. But the also, one Asc- has been taken. Ascension's art is also phenomenal, oh. and I think I was just kind of comparing it to Ascension in that regards. Right. And I'll say this: I'm not the like. Well, I know you know I'm not the biggest fan of spaces. I'm not also the, I'm also not the biggest fan of fantasy as like a aesthetic aesthetic either. I'm very much like I I really like um. The hell do you like video games at all? I why do you think I like Shin Megami Tensei over and like. Like over like most other RPGs, it's because I like contemporary settings. Oh, like, okay. Like I, I I like that contemporary aesthetic. Um, though I will say the art in the the, uh, the art in um. Uh, Ascension does give me a bit of a Shin Megami Tensei feel to it, even though it be, it's um. Very obviously not. Yeah. Uh, specifically <laughs> for there's it reminds me of, like there's certain like demons like um Satan and um, I could see Satan in um. Four, not say it in um Lucifer and um Shin Megami Tensei Four, uh being a um card in this game. I have no idea who that is, but oh uh, Lu- Lucifer Lucifer in um Four is got a giant demon baby for a hand. Oh, what his hand is a baby? Yes, his hand is a demon baby. That doesn't seem very practical for grabbing things. It's, Unless uh, the baby. Uh, has well, that's, hands. it's okay. It has a mouth. That... Yeah. The baby has a mouth and also arms. I mean, I, I, baby Shimmy. arms aren't very effective. They aren't, but they still exist. Four has Imagine some... like you're trying to pick up a pencil, and then you're relying on this crying baby at the end of your wrist to like try. And, <laughs> and then he starts eating it, and you're like, "Come on!" God. This is I'm this just is trying why... to sign the soul contract. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is why it's good to have both LP and Dizzy on because they're really good at the like analogies, like the comedic analogies, and I because I take things way too seriously for my own good. Same here. <laughs> Was that an like, analogy? I'm just trying to understand your. your video no, no, game. but it, it's 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 the um it's the way I guess the way that you and Dizzy like use your words to paint this picture. This beautiful, and... disgusting picture. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep. Anyways, um, the only um, the the other big thing that the uh, void does is that it's got the most con- like, while yes, the enlightenment has like we'll have a couple cards that can banish. Uh, the void is the main faction that has all the banished potential. Yes. Which, due to some later expansion uh, things, kinds of ma- kind of makes the if. Pointless. Um, later expansions have some cards that, when they go right into the middle f- field, it lets you banish. It says, "Oh, you can banish any card from your hand or your um, discard pile." So it makes the point of the void less desirable, especially because one of the things I appreciate about the the strategy of Ascension is outside of well, outside of the main. Um, like the start, first ten cards you start out with, you got to be really careful about banishing cards. It's it's very much a risk to do so, because every time you banish a card, you're losing the potential for points. So you're always right. So you're always like, okay. So you wanna you wanna favor your low honor cards first. Yeah, but at the same time, depending on how close of a match it is, that one honor might make the difference. So like I was I, I played a game with like my coworker um a few days ago, and. I won by one point, and granted, it was because I got the card that lets you take another turn. If I would have lost, if I didn't draw that card, <laughs> like that, that made that made that game. But even so, if I banished any of like like I was already banishing some of my one star cards at that point. If I banished one more of those cards, I would have tied. I wouldn't have won that game. So it's it's very it's very much a risk. You have to sit there and be like, okay. How consistent is my deck? Uh, and am I more likely to lose because of this inconsistency, or am I more likely to lose because I've banished a one honor card? And at, at first, you're like, okay, well, I've got a bunch of these one on, one honor cards, and my deck's not consistent, so like I'll, I'll banish this one, I'll banish this one. But you got to be careful, because you'll start banishing cards, and you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> every, every time you banish, it's, it, it's, uh, it's a greater risk. It's kind of like scrapping in Star Realms too. As soon as you get past your uh, 
As soon as you get past your scouts and your vipers, all of your ships are giving you good resources, assuming you played the game well. Yeah, but the other and thing assuming was, the market was friendly to you. But the other thing with with Star Realms, Star Realms favors like focusing on decks that focus on factions. So right. So if you're like, okay, I'm clearly like by the way that this game's going, I'm clearly leaning between like these one or two factions. Let me get rid of so. Yeah, like, I'm clearly building red-blue, so let me get rid of my yellow cards. Yeah. So, it, make, it, it makes the choice of which card you're getting rid of. Or, the choice of, okay, it makes sense for me to get rid of this card, even though it might be a pretty decent card. It doesn't, like, it disrupts my, um... It, it, it disrupts my own, um, momentum. So, it's a bit like Monopoly. Everything's Monopoly. <laughs> Capitalism 101. Everything's Monopoly. Everything is Monopoly. Oh man, he w Lunch Release wasn't here for when um, I did um, my um, Ben Shapiro joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to check the recording later. Yeah. Um, anyway. Also, my terrible impression of you because you were the only one we haven't picked on yet. Yeah. Oh, well, I started shit. it. Uh, <laughs> No, of like like Tar usually he try he actually tries to do an accurate one for some reason because he's a good person. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Why would I not try to do an accurate impression? I'm, I'm just I'm just memeing now. That's the point of an impression. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyways, so that's that's the last faction. Uh, I. So let's so let me see if I have if I've remembered this correctly. Mm -hmm. Enlightened lets you draw a lot of cards. Mm -hmm. um, what was the second one? Lifebringers? Lifebound. Lifebound. Uh, those focus on stealing honor from the pool. Yeah. Stealing honor uh, from the pool? The... Uh, you're just going to have to listen back to this podcast. You're going to have to listen sense. back. You go honor from the, the honor pool, pool. You take all the honor. <laughs> and... I'm just struggling to comprehend what that means. Yeah. It, it, it'll be fine. It, it's okay. It's, it's fine. It's fine. Dive right into it's the okay. pool. Ta okay. Keep <laughs> just keep going. Um, the ma the machina? Mechina, or whatever. Mac ma machina. But, well, it's M-E-C-H-A-A and the A. The machines. Yeah, the yeah, machines. The machines. Uh, the machines focus on getting more machines. Yep. They're the automatons. That makes yeah, but, sense. Yeah, specifically the machine constructs. Yeah. Um, and the void focuses on scrapping and big damage. Yeah. Essentially. And the old and basically the only way this differs from Star Realms is that there's an added teamwork mechanic. Kind of. Not really. Well, I'm not entirely. I'm assuming by that. damage done to monsters does not stick. What you must mean? be able to do that much damage in a single turn. Yeah, you have to be able to do that damage in a single turn. Okay, so there's the com there's the competition. Yeah. Because remember the whole the whole idea is that you want in the world you want the you want all the honor for yourself. Well, you want to have the highest amount of honor so you can be the one to go defeat the god like the, the so you can yeah. become the god slayer essentially. Of course. And where where I appreciate like so. When it comes to deck building games, especially when there's factions involved, uh, you due to the nature of the randomness of the center deck, center row, you can't re reliably or realistically depend on getting certain factions of cards. You can't plan, right. you can't plan out what factions I'm going to get. Espe my 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 favorite Star Realms build is red blue, but there's all these yellow cards in the, on the market, and it's just like fuck. And that one time the red card comes out, your opponent takes it. Yes, of course. So with the um with us like with Ascension, what I really appreciate about like what I really like about it is even if your opponent takes a really good card, you're not fucked. And you don't have to focus on specific factions. Even the um there's a later expansion that brings in faction leaders that you get points based off getting a getting fa getting that certain faction, which also it's randomized which faction leader you get. So it's not like you there's can just a, yeah. There's a Star Realms expansion that's kind of like that. Yeah, and I, I like I like that it's randomized, that 
the faction leader you get is, well, well, it's a random faction leader because it's not like you can be like, oh, I'm going to take this one because clearly it's the best. Because realistically, they're all good except the Enlightened one sucks. The Enlightened, <laughs> fa- the, the, Enlightened, the Enlightened faction leader takes the least amount of points to get his card. He's also has the worst. Ab- he is a banishable card. He is not worth having in your deck. Let's just say oh. that. But there's uh, but there's but there's other things too like um there's a later expansions have this thing called the rally mechanic where if you pick up a card of a certain faction, uh if it's if the rally effects in play, if the next card played is of that faction, you can take that card as well. Okay. So with the faction leaders, um, when you have their points maxed out, uh, you can automatically rally the cards of that faction. Okay. So let's say if I'm like I've got the life bound here, I've got her maxed out. Uh, I pick up a lifebound card, and the next card's lifebound. I can take it, take that as well, and it's great. But just for free? Just for free? Yeah, I can take it for free. Neat. Uh, but yeah, Star Realms has a little thing, kind of not not the rally system, but it does have the heroes. Um, like you can just like you buy them, and they immediately come out into play, but they don't do anything unless you burn them. Yeah. No, but. I trying to go over all the expansions and ascension would take like th- would that's, take like three... that's gonna take three years. Yeah, well, three different podcasts. <laughs> it's three years. So, um, as- the ascension mobile game is completely free. You can get the uh, com- the first the base set. It's completely free on um mobile. Uh, then you could on Steam you can get. Um, I think it's, you can get like the first nine expan like the base game and the nine expansions for ten dollars. So that's a really that's a really good deal on that that part. Like, well, it's the ten it's a ten ex, nine expansions plus like some of the promos, and then the other expansions. Oh gosh, you're cutting out to yeah. a ridiculous degree. I don't care. And then the later expansions are like <laughs> like five dollars each, but I would say give it definitely give ex, Ascension a, uh, a shot. It does sound largely the same. So I'll probably well, like I mean, it, but I mean, all Star de- Realms is my comfort zone. <laughs> I mean, all all deck builders are essentially the same, right? I mean, you'd have you'd have to do something completely radical than the center, like well, than having the center, the, like the marketplace center row, um, yeah, set up to even to even remotely do something different. Um, I'm awful at COD games, like well, I'm really bad. I tried playing Hearthstone some years ago, and I was well, like, you, I you, just don't, I just can't might, beat anybody. You might like deck builders because you don't have to worry about building your like, because it's the game is about building your deck. It's not about uh, coming in with the best deck. Huh. So all you need to do is okay, learn maybe. which cards. Are, all you have to do is look like pl- learn. Look at what cards, cards are on the market. Figure out which ones will suit your needs the best, and then. Hopefully, have enough coins to take those. Yeah, you don't have to worry about that douchebag that has like this the meta like either the one sh- one the one turn kill deck or the the meta shit, and you just want to go in there and have a fun time. Okay, I don't. know. It's just like the something about the tactics in these games like hasn't quite sunk in for me yet. Maybe it will one day. Don't worry. Um, like I still my last few attempts of playing. Um, okay. Like, okay. I'll really... I'll leave it. I'll leave it with this. I I I try playing Hearthstone. I kind of get it, but I don't get it. Isn't it basically just magic? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I've been playing in what I've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh for over a decade. Like I've played the games. I've like I've played some of the like physical game. I've like I I watch YouTubers explain how to play Yu-Gi-Oh, and I still don't understand how to play Yu-Gi-Oh good. So take that as you will, lunch. And the fact that I'm, I really enjoy Ascension, and I'm pretty good at it. Okay, okay. Well, sometime I'm gonna have to listen to the beginning of this episode and know how the fuck it works. Yeah. Also, you can listen to last week's episode where I explained Star Realms. Yeah. Which is the game <laughs> that I'm comparing it to. Yeah, start with the Star Realms because this is definitely a sequel episode. It is a sequel episode. Okay. Now then, let's them completely shift gear so I can put um hashtag um Brawly movie in the in the hey. search analytics. Um, LP, it's your time to shine. Yep. By the sorry, way, I've got an LB rather. 
my internet connection was messing up for a second. Oh, that's fine. So if there was an awkward pause, I was just mm. trying to get my bearings. Yep. Uh, what? Okay. Broly? Now Broly? 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 Yep. Broly now. What? Broly? <laughs> Anyways, yeah. I've got I've got forty minutes. So um, like if you go if you start going over, just we'll do the same thing as when you had to hop out. Okay, so I got forty minutes to talk about Broly. Yeah. Or at least give a we can we can talk about sell us on why we should watch Broly and then I'll watch Broly and we can have a really in depth spoiler talk about it. Okay, well I, I shouldn't need forty minutes, um, <laughs> but I don't know. It's easy to get to go overboard in a free form discussion setting. But uh, especially okay, when we're so meeting. I guess we we won't talk about the spoilers. Um, okay, well maybe first I should talk about. Uh, my experience with Dragon Ball in recent years to give some context to to what my opinion is. Um, so, I thought the Battle of Gods movie is amazing and probably the best, one of the best Dragon Ball stories, period. Uh, that was not the one with Golden Freezer, correct? No. No, Battle that was of Resurrection Gods F. was the one where Beerus is introduced and they have the big battle. Um... Okay. I thought that one was. I don't best. follow. I don't follow Dragon Ball lore. I've I right. follow Dragon Ball despite never actually watching a full episode of Dragon Ball. Okay, well, um, I think part of what I really like about uh, Battle of Gods is like it. It kind of feels like a really cool epilogue to the the Dragon Ball series. Um, I won't go into it too much because it's not what we're talking about. But that movie's mm-hmm. great. I thought Resurrection F was. Uh, that was, was the fun. one with Golden Freezer. Resurrection F was fun, but really not an expansion on Dragon Ball and kind of just like a just like a fun thing, I guess. And then I thought Dragon like Ball project. Super was basically terrible. <laughs> so uh I've for a couple of years, Dragon Ball has been this thing that just pisses me off or makes me feel sad that it's not as cool as I want it to be. Um, so I, I, I've been pretty jaded, um, but with this new movie, they've kind of like, you know, they've, everyone was talking about how good it is and they've really switched up the art style and like got new people on. Um, and so I was pretty optimistic about it and I liked it. Um, I thought that it was good. Um, I still think Battle of Gods is... (laughs) Anything but good. I th- I'm sorry that I can't give you a super extreme opinion, but uh, I don't know. I, 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 there's a lot to really like about it. Um, I think basically the setup for the movie is really interesting. It's really expanding on on the world, and we. It's like I don't know. There's something about it. Like it's something about the way the drama slowly builds is like kind of not Dragon Ball, uh, but in a, in an interesting way. Um, and once we start, the more the movie setup goes on, like we, uh, learn more about the characters and the characters are actually, or at least the new characters are quite nuanced and interesting and they have cool relationships with each other. And like, it's, it's really intriguing in a world building way. And which is not what I'm used to in Dragon Ball and especially not a Dragon Ball movie where usually they just fight until someone dies um so i was really loving it until a certain point which is <laughs> where they start fighting and then it kind of seems like they forgot about the plot which is interesting because i've heard how a dragon of ball people... tends to work from yeah what I know. basically um but a lot of people seem to have said that like you know they wish the intro didn't go on as long but i personally felt like the intro was the best part because like once the fighting begins, it, it it's not uh, for, the, the momentum looks, just stops. the The fighting looks really cool and all, uh, like it looks amazing, but it's not really much of a narrative climax to what we saw earlier. Um, and it, it but it is really cool. Um, and what else? The movie's really funny. Um, I watched it in a in like a packed theater. Because it was only on one evening where I live, um, and there was lots of times where the the whole audience was laughing together, and it was really fun. Um, there are some 
fun surprises in here. Um, like, or do you care to give any examples, or is it something? Uh, that... I I just mean like, hmm, just the way they treat certain characters. Like, I don't know. The writing's just really, like, actually good. I think um, most most of the jokes are, are land. I, I'm trying not to say too much about what actually happens in the movie. Okay. And um, there's one thing that I think needs to be addressed. Broly isn't he supposed? Isn't he like the worst character in the Dragon Ball series? Just like from a narrative standpoint. Okay. Um. So you were cutting out a bit, but I think you just asked me, isn't Broly meant to be a terrible character, according yes. to the fan base? Um. I think. Okay. First of all, I. I don't necessarily agree with everything the Dragon Ball fan base has to say. I, I think the the fact that Broly is such a hated character, I've, I've always thought it was a bit weird just because, like, I think every, almost every movie villain in Dragon Ball is just a big, dumb guy with no personality who's evil. Um, I, I guess people I maybe don't... I guess the thing is Broly's really popular, and also his look is a bit gaudy in terms of, like, he's just so big and so spiky. Um, but, right. um, yeah, he's, he's one of really one of the weird, more, um, f I would say kind of almost like a fan, like almost like a fan design sort of character. It's like someone who doesn't really understand the aesthetic of Dragon Ball making a char Dragon Ball character. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, I think people, like, isn't his entire thing. Like he's basically God, <laughs> like he is the most powerful, like he has the most raw strength of anyone in the Dragon Ball cast. Yeah, well, I think a lot of people love yeah, Broly because he's really, really, really strong, and a lot of people think that's a shallow reason to like a character, but I think in Dragon Ball, I feel like that's a pretty fair reason to like a character because there's often not a lot of character depth. But I will say that in this new movie, one of the biggest accomplishments is that they actually made Broly into a really interesting character. Um, really? Like, he's He's great. Um, like when I was talking about the character relationships are really good. It's specifically between Broly and his father and Broly and uh, the new characters he meets. Uh, it's really well done. Like Broly, you could almost argue that uh, Broly is the main character. Like it's all really his story and he's the one who's like, I don't know, gets the most characterization and development. And yeah, because like we see... I think we see more of him before he's a giant rampaging monster when he's just kind of in his base form. Um, and yeah, it was really cool. He, he, it's a, also, it's a very new direction. For also him. note, my only experience with Broly is the team four star dub. So, <laughs> Oh, I mean, he, he was a pretty one dimensional guy before. And he was, he was very, very obviously evil. And before like, insane i want to destroy all the planets kind of evil well now it's right. like he's he's more just like a guy who hasn't like been acclimatized to society and like has these anger issues these like he has the this kind of crazy anger but it hasn't really been like um i don't know dealt with or anything he's not centralized exactly towards evil. goku correct sorry centralized towards goku correct um not in this new movie uh he doesn't okay. just he doesn't right. exactly have anything there's no more Kakarot in this one because uh well like the original reason for Broly hating Goku was pretty weird. It was that yeah, like it was kind of... when they were babies yeah. in the sleeping pods together, <laughs> Goku used to cry all the time. For so now... three hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's basically what it was. I mean um, that's that's as petty as it gets. I'm glad, even though it's iconic to Broly, I'm glad they weren't afraid to remove something that didn't matter. Because, yeah, like, when you think about it, Bro Broly's family's grudge should be towards Vegeta and his family. Mm -hmm. And so that's how it is in the new movie. And yeah. so that makes way more okay. sense. Um, yeah. What else? What else? I, I feel like I've said most of the things. I don't want to get too specific. Um, Neat. <laughs> so... Artistically, like it looks, it looks really, really cool. Um, like they've had, they've got like basically a new art director. Um, because it's been like the same guy who's been 
destroying the character and designs. From and deciding what, what I understand, they really needed it. Yeah, well, um, I think the guy who was doing it before was just like, he's been doing it so long that like, um, he's, um, I think he was kind of phoning it in a bit. Like, you can look at lots of, uh, there are lots of examples where when he's storyboarding scenes, like, he always draws characters in, like, the same, like, couple of poses and, and, like, has the same couple of shots. And you can look over, like, all these different movies and episodes where you've got, like, the exact same shot with different characters. And so I get a feeling he's maybe kind of tired of it. Um, but the, the new guy really breathes life into it. Like, um, it's a lot less angular, the, uh, the artwork. It's more rounded and a bit more simple, which means that it's much easier to animate. Um, like, part of why... Um, like, Battle of Gods and Resurrection F are honestly kind of static films for a lot of it, because animating these characters is kind of annoying, and, like, there's a reason they kind of use a bit of CG here and there. And it's I think that's also the reason okay. the TV show is not very well animated. Like, it's it's hard to keep up drawing those detailed designs long term. Yeah. Uh, but the artwork is a bit more versatile now to, like, being more loose with it, and so I think it's much easier to animate. And they animated the fuck out of this movie. Um, it's, it's actually, it's crazy. The camera's flying around. Um, I, yeah, I haven't really talked about the action, but it's, it's really good. It's Dragon I Ball I just, action. Yeah, but like, uh, you know, they don't, all the production values are there. Like, it seems like they put their all into it. I just like have that problem where I feel like the fighting is not very, is not very emotionally attached to all the interesting setup. Um, so I can appreciate it from an animation perspective, but story-wise, I think it was a bit lacking. Well, it sort of sounds like to me that, like, whoever was, whoever wrote the script for this movie had, like, had more of the idea of, oh, let's tell Broly's untold story, and at some point, like, the overheads were like, where's the fighting supposed to be in this story? And, cause well, it's a Dragon I think Ball the movie. way it actually works is, well, Akira Toriyama, the creative of Dragon Ball, apparently, like, yeah basically wrote the script for this movie um mm -hmm. but like i think in his scripts like when it gets to the fighting parts it's just like they fight like yeah. i think um part of the problem is probably that the fighting goes on for a really long time until like so, it's been ages so, since you've been reminded of what the story is so like so uh, dragon ball in a nutshell yeah i mean basically though like i think the character work is a lot better in this than it is in a lot of Dragon Ball yeah. beforehand. I think, um, I think probably what... Okay, so it's what it sounds like to me is that it's not that the problem is necessarily the fighting. It's that because you now have all this characterization, the how flat, like emotionally flaccid the fighting tends to be stands out even more so, where Dragon Ball's always just been a spectacle without much substance. Now that it has substance, the spectacle you're, you're, is lacking what you came to expect, like, well, what your expectations were in that movie. Um, okay, you just, like, cut out in and oh, out okay. while you're saying that, but I think I know what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Um, and, I don't know, I think, I think Dragon Ball definitely, um, I think normally, it has had moments where the, the fighting and the story are working together at, at the same time. Um, and like, I, there I, are lots of... Like, otherwise, it wouldn't be so, you know, satisfying I, when Goku goes Super Saiyan I, for the first time after I, his best friend and, dies kind of thing. And I, but generally, I uh, I do see where you're coming from. Yeah, and I, I definitely... Um, there, there are definitely times where the story and the... Like, and the battling have... Like, like there's, 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 there's important, like, story emotional beats within the stories, but those tend to only be in the climaxes of characters' arcs. There's never really... And he, like the the fighting only ever services the story, like when it's the climax. Otherwise, the story like a lot of the fighting tends to just be a lot of story padding, and a lot of spectacle. Where you could technically cut yeah, out a lot. Yeah, I of think what that's happened. generally that's generally true. Um, and you know what? There's there's nothing wrong with that. Dragon Ball tends to have great fights. That's what people tend to go in for. I find like, and that's also partially why like. Like I don't really enjoy watching Dragon Ball that much because the fights don't do much for me outside of like those big climactic moments. I think also like there are ways to make fights more. Um, I I think uh, 
there are ways to make fights more interesting even outside of just a straight up story context where like it's more interesting to follow um i think something wrong with modern dragon ball fights which is definitely in in this movie too is like there's not really much sense of damage and like characters wearing down mm -hmm. like yeah. they'll fight and fight and fight then once someone one will get the advantage and so he'll the other one will yell and get stronger and mm -hmm. then they'll return to fighting at the exact same intensity as before and until eventually it just randomly ends well like in the early like in like the saiyan saga like yeah it gets I'll everyone say, gets so beat up that they can barely move and it's like they're just like you get a real sense of how intense it was where like goku's on the ground and fucking now gohan is the is the fight vegeta but he can stand a chance because vegeta's tired from before it's like it's really exciting uh, and but another I, I think example also i oh. think also with the saiyan saga is that that was something very like that was a very big change of pace for dragon ball anybody who was fans of dragon ball before see is now there's these earth shattering like godlike enemies coming down and they've wiped out this entire cast that you've come to know and think are yeah, really the strong. Yeah, stakes are like the what we've come to realize is just like normal aspects of Dragon Ball battle were like upping the ante back then. Yep. And um, I think be, between um within the first three sagas, I don't know, I can't say much about the fourth saga because I I've, I've only seen the Team Four Star stuff and I've I've played some of the Dragon Ball games, so I'm a, I know the story that happens, but not the context of how it's told. From yeah. but within the f first three sagas, it def I, I, I in comparison because I have seen some of the movies, so I I can I'll make a comparison in this regards. That at majority a majority of the time within the first three um, sagas, each fight is developing the certain characters to some degree. Like, if a character is not going to have some character moments, they're taken out of the fight immediately. It, like, they're, like... And even sometimes, like, if a character's taken out immediately, like, if, like, they're immediately defeated, like, I think that's probably what's interesting with Vegeta's fights, is every time Vegeta's taken down, like, that's builds into his greater character arc. But, I just... I feel like modern Dragon Balls just it doesn't have that same like focus because all these characters have already had their arcs. Um okay, again you cut out a bunch, but I think I know yeah. what you said. Yeah. Um oh, yeah. I, hopefully when I move into the new I, house it uh, better. I, I think possibly it might be my internet it's being a bit spotty at the moment. Oh, it might possibly um, be Discord. No, I, he there. was cutting out for me too. Oh yeah. okay. Get used to um, it. Yeah, so in terms of fights being meaningful for a character's development and having... Um, I think... Yeah, I think a lot of modern Dragon Ball is, is like that. But I, And n not being like that is part of why I really liked um, Battle of Gods. Because, like, because it actually manages to give Goku some development, um, which he hasn't had in ages. Um, yeah. I mean, because, like, the whole movie is kind of about, like... You know, because, yeah, you think of Goku as this character who's had his arc, if he ever had one, and he's, you know, he's he's defeated Majin Buu, and he's, like, he's basically done everything. He's got three Super Saiyan transformations now. He's, like, an end of an RPG character. Um, and so having Beerus show up and just beat the fuck out of him in, like, two seconds is, like, really a game changer. And, like, you see Goku up and they'll be like, shit, I'm, like, <laughs> back, to, I'm back to being here. And um, when when they do the, the ritual to make him into a Super Saiyan God so he can fight Beerus, like, there's this really cool... When Goku and Beerus are fighting, it's kind of like... They're having this cool conversation where, like, you know, Goku is actually kind of disappointed that he had to use this... this uh, his friend's power-up to, to be able to compete with Beerus because of his pride. And he's like, you know, like, everything I worked my whole life for is nothing compared to this. And, you know, Beerus is like, yeah, well... That's a very prideful thing to to say, considering you know at least your friends are willing to help you, and now you're getting to save the world. And like, there's an interesting kind of parallel where it shows that like, Vegeta's kind of grown grown out of pride a little bit, while Goku kind of hasn't. It's it's really cool, and like it's like, and it really plays into who Beerus is because like he's not really super evil. He's kind of just like this um, guy. This kind of just he's just guy. like this guy. I mean. <laughs> he is bad in a sense, but like he he has his own wisdom and shit, and like it's really cool. Um, 
and I think because the climax of that movie gets to have that kind of resolution uh, to the characters, that's why it's my favorite one. Um, it would yeah. be re- it would have been really cool if the fight with Broly could have said something a bit more about who Broly is, but it for the amount of time it goes on, it doesn't really say enough. Yeah, and uh, it's also where I think it comes into this like it's both this both this it's beneficial that it's that it has a movie length because you don't have to worry about the general Dragon Ball padding and people standing around talking in a fight as much like or the fights because that really is the worst part of Dragon that's, Ball that's, that's the only thing keeping me from actually going and watching Dragon Ball and just instead of just watching the um, Team 4 Star Bridge because I don't like I've got enough anime to watch already that's I'll, that's a lot of padding for not a lot of I, well, uh, a lot trust of me, like when the movie finished, I was talking about one of my friends I watched it with about how there was a shockingly small amount of talking for a Dragon Ball fight. Like once the wow. fight starts, it's like it's just fucking fighting for like it's a almost, really long time. And there's like very minimal interruptions. It's almost as if they got all the talking out of the way first. <laughs> Basically. But also Broly isn't that vocal of a character once he's mad. Mm-hmm. It it almost be interesting to see if they did like a like a short anime series just focus like 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 spinoff just focused on Broly as development, like and whatnot like and like maybe using like this movie as like a base, because I feel part of the problem with drag like modern Dragon Ball also is that because you have all like Dragon Ball between Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z you have all this development, and time taken I think Battle of Gods from what you've explained is like is like the pinnacle of like. With Goku finally has his development, but even throughout Dragon Ball, Goku tends to be, have been like the Jesus figure. Like he comes in and he saves the day, but everybody like he he affects everybody, but nobody really affects him. Yeah, Which, that's a great point. So, but so everybody that's connected to Goku has already had their character arcs. There's nowhere else for them to grow outside of maybe some of these movie villains like Broly or whatnot. So. But you can't, you can't remove Dragon Ball without the idea or presence of Goku, as well. So, I don't think there's any more perfect character to maybe have like a character arc for than than Broly because. Um. He's... Yeah, and there's definitely room for that. Uh, after the movie, like it's, it, it kind of almost feels like this is just an introduction to Broly. Um, yeah. Because like we. We Which is really weird and, because it's his second it, movie. <laughs> no, this is his this fourth is third. movie. There were three. There were three. Fourth? There were three of the, the movies of the original Broly. No, he's super po- uh, popular. Like, and they've yeah. been using him in video games and what if scenarios for like, yeah, no. ages. But now he's finally canon. And Man, like, playing it, God, playing it's just Broly so good the that shit. they made him actually good. Like as a as a a good character. Thank God, finally. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, only took how many decades? Yeah, <laughs> but he's finally he he is finally like a character that I think is worthy of being liked, and he's still he's still really cool in the way that like all the old school Broly fans would like. He still gets to beat the fuck out of Goku and Vegeta, but he also is a character. Um, so it's quite a success on the on that front. Instead of just being this ever present force that just cheeses his way up to the top yeah i'll be i'll be up front if if they announce a broly spinoff for dragon ball i'd absolutely watch that assuming that it's not like terrible <laughs> <laughs> i watch enough bad anime as it is Oof. i am um, the 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 dragon ball super manga is still going and it's actually currently doing a storyline that takes place after the broly movie um it's- I'm not. Sh- I'm wondering if the anime is going to come back and cover this storyline, or if there'll be a movie, or I don't really know what the future is. But yeah, it seems uh, like a- Broly will probably be taking a break for a little while because he doesn't seem to be yeah. related to the storyline. But I hope they bring him back eventually and do something with him because even though this movie is is great for his character standalone, it would be cool to yeah see them follow up on some of the potential to have a character who's like yeah. still growing. Because I, as I can't think of any other character really to focus on from the Dragon Ball series without having to just absolutely make a new one. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean Vegeta. Made... Vegeta's actually 
had some good development over Super, like, or or like more like a showing of his development, I guess. Um, yep. Though I think it's, I mean, I really don't like Super, but I think the handling of Vegeta as a character is quite yeah. good. But I think the problem with someone like Vegeta is that Vegeta could never be the protagonist or like be the focal point. He's oh, very right. much. A, I I feel like if you want to spin off the, with a protagonist is someone who's got. Uh, yeah a journey to go on and like i think i think with i think in fact if they did a broly spinoff that'd be the perfect way to have more character development for vegeta because broly and vegeta are and are enter like have like this history and like between their families the saiyan race like goku the story of goku and vegeta have has essentially been told how many times well, it's, it's it's the status quo at this point. Yeah. It's not a story. It's it's the normal that other events happen to. Like, I really, I I really think that if we had some like again like a, maybe a short short anime series where you have like conflict between Vegeta and Broly, or even if they have to like go through the anime trope of where they like, they make up, they become like they respect each other, etc. I think it'd be good, like put it, like putting them in the same show together would be an interesting way of having that character development for both of them. Hmm. And then on the on the on the, on the last because again I don't follow Dragon Ball. And then on the last episode, just have Goku come in with a new transformation with Broly, and then just well they they like do a three way transformation. Shockers. They do a three way transformation, go Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Kaioken, Ultra Instinct, and just destroy whatever big bad they're facing i i mean if they were to do a broly oh, um, goku has to go spin-off. legendary <laughs> oh god <The> green. look <laughs> it, more forms are not the answer man i, I was being <laughs> oh man more, have, i know guys, i know i know but the, no more forms please have, have you seen the leak for super saiyan 23 <laughs> <laughs> and this has been Bros in a Landfill signing off. Signing off. <laughs>